Welcome to episode seven of Running on OCP, where we speak with organizations using open compute in a variety of ways. Everyone from end users to software companies, or in this week's case, an organization that aligns with OCP tenants. This week's organization is the Sustainable Digital Infrastructure Alliance, or SDIA, based in the Netherlands. I had the opportunity to chat with their executive chairman, Max Schultz, and within the SDIA, they work with governments and companies and individuals to focus on specific initiatives such as heat reuse, smarter power consumption, and the overall efficient use of resources. And one of the best things about Max is he has one of the broader perspectives of sustainability that I've come across in the industry. So I really hope you enjoy this week's chat with Max Schultz, the executive chairman of the SDIA. So thanks for joining me today, Max. I really appreciate you taking the time. Sure, Steve. Uh, thanks for having me. All right. So why don't you take just a minute here, introduce yourself, and tell us a bit of background on how you came to start SDIA. Yeah, good question. Um, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Max Rotze. Uh, I'm the chairman of the Sustainable Digital Infrastructure Alliance, short SDIA. Um, how did I get to creating this nonprofit? Um, good, uh, good question, actually. Uh, I'm a software engineer by, uh, by training. Um, I was a CTO for, for a few companies uh, in the US and in, in across Europe. Uh, building technology companies and uh, I, I realized I always thought that it doesn't really make sense that we consider software to be resource free so we always assume um, yeah we need when we when, when software needs to scale we add more memory we add more storage it's just unlimited um, and while the digital technology is growing and I think that's a good thing and I, I wanted to grow more I'm, I'm technocentric at the heart um, I also want to make sure that we don't create a negative effect from that growth. So it's kind of decoupling the growth of digital technology from its natural resource consumption is, is why I started the uh, alliance together with my, my team. So the how is it structured? And tell us a little bit about the board and what are some of the goals of SDIA? Yeah, so it's a, it's an interesting, so we are structured as in what's called an industry association or what's known as this, it's a, it's a nonprofit. We have three entities in three countries, one in Germany, one in the Netherlands, and uh, one in, in Belgium. Um, and we, we are set up as a, as a European entity. We, we have the aspiration to, to go global. Um, we are different in the sense that we don't represent the interests of a single industry. We represent the interests of 29 industries that together make up the digital sector. So from, from electrons that go into data center to data centers, to fiber, to hardware, uh, to software in itself, and what unifies all our members is our roadmap. Um, we'll explain that, I'm sure, in a little bit. Um, and the commitment to, to sustainability. Um, and we advocate basically on behalf of all those industries as long as they're committed to sustainability and our roadmap. I see. So are you uh, an organization that's going to be producing, say, specifications around sustainability or directives? What are some of the outputs of the SDIA? Um, I think that, again, a good question. Um, it's something that we're still, I guess, figuring out to a certain extent, uh, because fundamentally we're very action driven. So what is really important to us is that we, that we implement things and that we, that we do things to advance the roadmap towards a sustainable digital economy. Um, and we actually kind of do whatever is necessary to do that. And sometimes in the past that has been research, it has been papers, it has been defining best practices. But it also sometimes meant setting up a physical pilot uh, and doing an actual physical project where we show that it works. Um, as long as it moves these industries forward and as long as it facilitates change, uh, we are very well organized to, to do all of these things. Um, but we, we are a bit, let's say, problem solution driven rather than um, yeah, just, just doing uh, standards for the sake of standards in that sense. Yeah, that makes sense then. So more um, execution and more action oriented, uh, which is good. Now, is you had said that your your goal is is currently, or sorry, your focus currently is just Europe. Is that right, or more worldwide, or other regions? So it's 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 tricky because uh, I would say half of our members are global organizations. Um, so so it's it's difficult to say we're just um, focused on Europe, um, but we we are in the sense that we think. 
that Europe is one of the biggest playing fields when it comes to sustainability at the moment, and, and Europe really wants to carve out its its position on the global stage. So we're quite we're getting a lot of support here. Let's put it like this. But we also, of course, have partners like OCP, which are also um, you guys are global, um, and our aspiration is definitely. Uh, to shape a global sustainability movement within the digital economy and not just a, a local one. And one of the, the more impressive things that your team has done is the roadmap. And so I encourage everyone listening to check out their roadmap at sdialliance.org and check out their roadmap. It is really impressive. So talk about the roadmap. It's all the way through 2013. So walk us through that roadmap and how it was formed. Yeah, thank you, Steve. I appreciate that you bring this up. I, yeah, the roadmap is 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 at this is at the heart of our alliance. Um, so if you if you take what I said earlier, so to decouple the growth of the digital economy uh, from its natural um, resource consumption, so energy, um, water, uh, minerals, um, you need to unify 29 industries. Well, how do you do that? First of all, you need to agree how we're going to measure progress towards our sustainability goals. And measuring that progress, we defined six metrics, or we actually took what is the most widely accepted metrics in each industry, which is, for example, CO2 equivalents, kilowatt hours, um, electronic waste as measured by WEEE, um, pollution, and also the cost of digital infrastructure, cost of digital power. And so these six metrics form our, our progress framework. So how do we measure progress across these industries? And then we defined 29 activities, which bring those metrics down. And these, act these activities are technology neutral. So we're not saying, you know, liquid cooling is better than immersion cooling. We're simply saying we should probably make sure that all energy from a data center is recovered, to give a very practical example. Or the other one is circular economy for hardware. It's probably a good idea. There's many ways to implement it, but we will just prefer the way that has the biggest impact on sustainability. So, so these are our 29 activities, six metrics uh, to deliver progress and the roadmap, yeah, until 2030, so the next 10 years. Um, it's, our, it's our tool of how we're hoping to move the digital economy towards sustainability. So walk me through that again. Well, let, let's cover the numbers again. How many industries, Max? 29? Yes, 29. There's, okay approximately 29 industries that together make up the digital yeah digital economy so if you really go from i always say from electrons all the way up to your instagram picture there's 29 industries involved in in making that chain and then how many um activities or metrics in the roadmap again there's uh, six metrics six sustainability metrics um in the roadmap that we use um, to measure progress towards, yeah, what we call a sustainable digital economy. Okay, and I think I have these right then. Emissions, energy consumption, electronic waste, resource consumption, pollution, and then the cost of digital power, the socioeconomic, is that correct? Yeah, correct. Great. It's really, uh, as I mentioned before, it's an amazing roadmap and a lot of thought has put in, uh, been put into this. I can tell one of the more interesting areas is that when you uh, look at an area of the roadmap, it maps back to the UN climate goals, the 17 UN climate goals. So how much did the UN climate goals influence that roadmap? And then how did you decide to link those two together? Yeah, uh, again, a good question. I think what what inspired us about the the sustainable development goals of of the UN um, was really this idea of inclusiveness. So it's one thing to to solve the sustainability equation. Uh, it's it's one thing to address climate change, but it's another thing to do it through systematic change. So so we see a lot of movement now. You know, single technologies being developed for single problems. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all about collaboration and about bringing people together. And I, in, in our understanding, that's also what the SDGs are for. They're an alignment tool to, to drive collaboration. And so they inspired us a lot in basically adding the next layer under them of, okay, how does the, um, the digital economy implement the SDGs? What is the plan? And that's our roadmap. 
And that's why also for us, it was actually really easy to link each activities to the SDGs because um, yeah, it was, it was a natural fit because everything we do is sustainability really in its full meaning. So balancing economics, the environment and society. And so we really find ourselves uh, within the SDGs. They're, they're a great tool in, in our opinion. Yeah, and it, it actually drew me to find out more about the UN climate goals through your roadmap and seeing that linkage. Uh, so it caused me to go over there and find out more about what those 17 are and how they map back to yours. Um, just to, to zero in on one of the, the areas of your roadmap, one of the areas of the roadmap that you mentioned is that your, your target is a 90% reduction in the consumption of rare metals by 2024. Now that seems extremely ambitious and rare metals are used in all the IT gear. So what would replace the rare metals uh, that we use for that type of equipment? Yeah, I think it's 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 not so much. Um, well, I, first of all, I'm not. A, I have to honestly say I'm not a semiconductor researcher. Uh, so maybe there is replacement on the way. We haven't seen any papers. I, I know that. Um, but what is I think interesting is not so much about replacing it. It's about reusing it, right? And I think the the IT industry at, or, or or yeah, the hard hardware manufacturing industry is actually quite capable. It's so high tech in itself. And I think we are so much, we are very capable to basically disassemble server hardware um, and reuse almost all of the components already today. And I think in a lot of ways that's already happening um, and in, it's just not communicated enough, but it's, we need to get to a level where we can, yeah, 90% of the minerals that are inside um, servers and server hardware and chips and, and all the other components uh, should be reused. I think that is, that is the ambition. Yeah, so to keep okay, the minerals that, makes, that are in yeah. the system, yeah. Yeah, that that aligns now. Now that makes yeah that that um, that makes a lot more sense based on the way that you've just explained it there. Now, the sustainability, uh, Max. When you speak with a lot of enterprises, they all have CRSR, CSR departments, and they they sustainability seems to be at the forefront of most organizations. But it's such a vast topic. How, if you're a typical enterprise, how should you view IT sustainability? Out of all this entire roadmap, where do you start? Yeah, I think, uh, again, a, a very good question. I, I think the biggest disconnect at the moment is, is in software. So so where should you start? I think you should, um, yeah, we, we, are, we are figuring this out at the moment. It's, it's not easy, but you should first attach a, a footprint to, to your software, or you should ask your vendors to attach a, a footprint to your software so that first of all you can quantify um, so to say the embedded emissions the embedded uh, resources that are in your IT infrastructure so if I look at it from that perspective that would be if I, if I would say something it's uh, that's the first step without data without information it's hard to make good decisions and I think on the other side I, I keep trying to educate people that sustainability is not about making everything environmentally friendly it's about balancing the environment and economics and I think especially in IT infrastructure today, there is a lot of waste. Waste not in the sense of inefficient construction, but waste in the sense of underutilization, for example, or a lot of duplication and redundancy. And I think that's something that is immediately measurable cost savings. It's, it has a very big economic benefit to an enterprise, while at the same time having an environmental benefit, right? Using refurbished hardware is another aspect that's, that's very easy. Um, but yeah, I, I think there, there's, it, it starts with measuring, in my opinion, and it starts with gathering the data and having the information available. And most enterprises, we, we had a good conversation with Airbnb, for example, they're quite surprised when they do that, when they quantify about the numbers they find and how significant IT infrastructure is actually a contributor uh, to emissions, but then also how easy it is to fix that. Yeah, that balance is, is key, and I like the way that you're driving home that that idea to make sure people understand that there's a balance, and not just uh, being environmentally friendly. So, what role the hyperscalers are at the forefront of a lot of these sustainability, at least on the PR side, about what they're doing. So, what role should the hyperscalers play in driving sustainability? Yeah, that, that, that's also a great question. I, I think. Yeah, I, I think big tech plays a really, really important role. 
um, because a um, from a sustainability perspective, they they are at the forefront of 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 uh, consuming green power, which uh, is of course a big part of the operational emissions of a data center, and I think that's great. But what would be what would be even more um, yeah positive would if they would help advance this movement towards uh, quantifying the impact of software and and different applications because it would trigger the development of a completely new industry. So in economics, if information is available, then the market can adapt to that information and, and develop new ideas and new businesses. And I think they can play a huge role making a lot of data available, making a lot of information available, how software performs at really, really large scale and what the impact then is per unit. And I think most hyperscalers will come out of this great because they are very efficient and they are very good at this optimization. So releasing their data isn't a threat to them. It's actually setting the standard for everybody else. It's like, this is how efficient, this is how clever you have to be. Um, and this is the gold standard. And I think, yeah, making that information available would be enormous, an enormous contribution to, to, the, to the sustainability community at the moment. So there are many things, Max, that you're doing at SDIA, which align very well with what we're doing at OCP. So what role do you see OCP playing to support your alliance and helping you achieve your goals? Yeah, I think OCP plays a very important role. So first of all, I want to acknowledge that the way OCP has pushed standardization and efficiency in, in, in hardware and especially in, in, in server equipment is, uh, in our opinion, very amazing because um, it's something that should have probably have happened uh, some time ago and it, it hasn't. Um, and seeing that is, is great. It makes our job a lot easier. Um, what we would like to see is actually a much broader adoption of OCP outside of the hyperscale community. Um, that would help us a lot because for us, hardware should be standardized. It would make it a lot easier to refurbish it, to recycle it if all the components are based on the same system, the same standards and the same designs. Um, and what we would like for OCP to push is, yeah, is, is to push these refurbishment guidelines, these uh, recycling guidelines, and, and maybe even implement the standardized chain of how yeah, OCP gear can be given from one person to the other or recertified uh, and things like this. But generally speaking, if OCP is adopted wider, uh, that would already help a lot. So. To, to, to reduce the fragmentation of, of uh, server hardware in the market. Yeah, that um, the second user hardware is our cir circular economy offerings. And we're seeing a, a large uptake on that, especially in Europe, as more people look for uh, the benefits of hyperscaler, even on the second user market. So we're working on that direction. And I know that your team is excited about that as well. And hopefully we'll see a continued growth in the circular economy market. Uh, moving forward now you've your past experience um, in your other areas as well as what you're doing now with SDIA you've been exposed to some really interesting use cases regarding edge data centers heat reuse uh, do you mind sharing just a few of those examples of what you've seen or are seeing in the market yeah of course I I think I think it's a, a lot of people maybe also listeners uh, of this will share this experience that I, I think edge and and these 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 words are um, yeah are they, they, everybody means something different I think um, I would call uh, one trend that we see that's interesting is so to say the movement towards decentral smaller data centers and we've seen some crazy uh, examples of course uh, for example wind cores who are implementing who are basically embedding a data center inside the tower of a wind turbine um, and they are much bigger than you think. Then we also see saw projects with Vattenfall um, where they basically co-located um, a container-based data center with a district heating plant and basically injected the heat into the backflow uh, of the district heating system, uh, which I think was quite interesting, interesting approach to heat recovery. We also see um, yeah, data centers such as block heating in the Netherlands uh, using the, 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 the warm air coming of data center for greenhouses, which is temperature wise, a great match. Um, and, and there's generally speaking, I, I think the movement on the physical side towards smaller decentral units is well underway. And I think there's a lot of interesting applications, how you then can combine data centers into the or 
integrate them into the energy system or into the industrial ecosystem and, and make them part of a chain. But I think what we are now seeing, what's even more exciting is that you're also seeing the software side evolve. So the promise of the cloud was actually to be able to use computation anywhere and to, to move things around. And I think with Kubernetes and um, what the Cloud Native Foundation is doing, what the hyperscalers are doing, there's, there's a lot of momentum now on building a cloud out of made up out of smaller decentralized um, data centers. And I think that's, that's very exciting. I think 10 years ago, that was called fog computing. Um, and it's now, it's now happening. And I'm, I'm very excited to see that as well, because it, it triggers data centers to be designed differently and more sustainable. Yeah, there's some great use cases. I had the opportunity to speak with Jerome a few weeks ago from Block Heating and the work that he's doing, heating those greenhouses using um, recycled energy from the data center or from a containerized unit is really impressive. Um, now, there are so many government initiatives and public sector initiatives around sustainability. The Climate Neutral Data Center Pack and the, the list goes on and on, uh, Gaia X, et cetera, in Europe. How do you prioritize what you participate and what you follow uh, for all of these different initiatives? Yeah, at the moment, it's uh, you're right. It's 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 a, it's a challenge sometimes to prioritize. Also, if you go, if you put uh, your scope to a global scale, there's there's even more going on. Um, now how do we prioritize? I think we have a very firm uh, definition of sustainability, and we have a very, uh, as we talked about before, a very strong plan and a very strong roadmap. So we really watch out and look what advances the roadmap. Not so much trying to be part of everything but trying to be really focused on, okay, what does what moves our roadmap forward? What delivers impact? Um, and then participating uh, in different initiatives and, and also collaborating with the governments and saying like, look, what can we do together? Because honestly, I, I think a lot of these initiatives are great, um, but they're also still not talking about the digital economy as a system. They're often coming from individual industries or individual players in that chain that alone can't do very much. So it, it is, we have a lack of systematic uh, initiatives. And so, um, yeah, we try to focus to create our own or, or to, yeah, to bring people together and try to make them create more systemic uh, initiatives and commitments uh, from different industries together. Yeah, and I, we're facing the same thing about getting companies to think about sustainability upfront discuss it early and often and, and into the design phase. Uh, and you're talking about the entire digital ecosystem and to make sure that sustainability theme runs across the entire, um, the entire market and the entire industry. So if, um, as we wrap up here, if people are interested in knowing more and getting involved in SDIA, where would, where would they go? Yeah, I think the, the, the first place uh, to go is, is our website. Um, you can, uh, yeah, sdiaalliance.org. Uh, you can can check it out. Um, you can also join our roadmap. So if, if you if you go to the roadmap page, uh, you can sign up and learn a lot more about how the roadmap works, what is expected of you if you join. Um, and yeah, we we're, we're welcome everybody. Even if, if, if you're not a sustainable company yet, but you want to embark on that journey, uh, it's very important for us to not judge, but to, embrace and everybody who commits to our to our roadmap and then help along their sustainability journey. I think that that's very important for us. Yeah, I'm one of, I really enjoy the partnership and the collaboration that we have with SDIA. I, your team aligns with our tenants extremely well and you're pushing us into new ideas and new areas where we haven't thought of it all the way through the, the way that you have on your roadmap. So I know we're gonna be leveraging a lot of your roadmap into some of our sustainability efforts. So we really value the partnership uh, that you and your team bring to the OCP community. So thanks, Max. I really appreciate the time today. And I'll be back with my key takeaways from my conversation today with Max from SDIA. Max shared a lot of interesting insights on his perspective of sustainability. I wanted to highlight just a few of those. One is his definition of sustainability and it's not about being environmentally friendly but it's about that balance between the environment and the economics he also mentioned the 
massive underutilization or the waste that goes on in the digital sector and how that can be addressed. And how he pointed to the hyperscalers uh, and their willingness to release information around their software performance metrics, which I thought was quite interesting. And lastly, how he sees the edge or these new edge distributed data centers spawning a lot of new ideas around re heat reuse and power efficiency, and that, that being a catalyst for sustainability. So Max, again, great insight, really appreciate his time. If you have any questions about the SDIA, please feel free to reach out to me at steve at opencompute.org, and I would be happy to introduce you to Max and the team. So thanks again for listening and be looking out for more episodes of Running on OCP in the coming weeks. Cheers.